Today I had a really amazing dream, a dream where finally RAM was back to normal prices, and a dream where finally the AI bubble had burst, it was just a wonderful dream. Then I woke up and realized I shit my pants. Welcome to 2026 and probably 27, 28, when we still won't be able to build a decent PC at a reasonable price. For now we just have to forget about upgrading our computers or buying the most powerful hardware, because not only RAM is getting more expensive, but also SSDs and even processors. And it wouldn't be so bad if it were just RAM, but GPUs are also getting expensive as hell, and they are likely to get even more expensive. Bruh. Nvidia, the main company for graphics cards, announced that it plans to cut GPU production by 30-40% blad, in the first half of 2026. Usually this happens when a new GPU line comes out, like the RTX 5000 Super Series for example. But no, unfortunately in 2026, new cards won't be released due to AI related shortages. What I'm about to say might sound completely insane, and maybe many of you won't believe me, but what if all of this done on purpose? What if the companies are secretly working together against us, my comrades? Think about it. All these new reports about cutting production by 30-40%, and it's not just GPUs, it's other computer companies too. What if all of this done just to artificially raise prices? Because you know what happened with RAM, right? There was so much of it that nobody cared about it. It was stupidly cheap. Yeah, RAM used to be one of the cheapest parts in a gaming PC, but now it costs almost as much as a new GPU. And the graphics card in turn are only going to get more expensive in the future. The situation has gotten so bad that even phones are affected. Uh huh, don't be surprised, phones also have RAM. And not just computers, but laptops, cars, and basically all the stuff that we use every day. Now imagine this, because AI is consuming so much RAM worldwide, phones are suffering too. And how does that affect you? Many phones released in 2026 will have less RAM, meaning lower performance. Basically mid-range phones will become weak, low-end phones will become ultra-weak, and high-end phones will become mid-range. And how do you like that news, my boy? Crazy, right? Let me be clear for you. I don't believe companies are secretly meeting in dark rooms or planning some evil global conspiracy. That's not what this about. What I do believe is much simpler and much more realistic. All of these companies are just playing by the same rules. Yes, Nvidia is planning to cut production by 30-40% and yes, part of that is caused by real limitations. RAM shortages, manufacturing capacity and the fact that AI workloads are consuming an insane amount of resources. That part is real for sure, but that's only half of the picture. The other half is economics. Shortages create control, limited supply stabilizes high prices, and high prices mean higher margins. If demand stays strong while supply stays limited, companies don't actually have a reason to fix the problem quickly. In fact, fixing it too fast would hurt their profits. Nvidia has already shown that the market is willing to pay almost any price for performance, and once consumers accept those prices as normal, there is no financial reason to go back. This is how price floors are created. RAM is the perfect tool for this. It's not just another component, it's the foundation of modern technologies. PCs, GPUs, smartphones, laptops, cars, servers, even basic household electronics all depend on it. RAM isn't just memory, it's a bottleneck. It defines performance, upgrade limits, and device lifespan. And here's where things get really interesting. When RAM becomes expensive, companies don't stop selling devices. They simply ship them with less memory. On paper, the product still exists. In reality, it ages much faster. Devices become outdated sooner, performance limitations are hit earlier, and the users are pushed into upgrading more frequently. That's not a failure of the system. That's the system working as intended. You don't need secret meetings for this to happen. You just have to play by the same rules, and the companies understood that pretty well. And right now every major tech company is moving in the same direction. I actually mentioned this back in my first video when the RAM shortage was just starting. I said that at its core, this situation is driven by something very simple, human greed. Every major company in the world exists for one main reason, to make as much money as possible. Helping regular people is rarely the primary goal, at best it's a secondary benefit. And honestly, let's be real for a second, if you were running a massive corporation that produces GP 
CPUs or memory and you suddenly saw a clear opportunity to increase profits, most people would take it. Not because they are evil, but because that's how humans work. We like to think of ourselves as highly rational and intelligent beings. And in many ways we are. But at the same time we still act on basic instincts. Competition, survival and greed. Profit becomes the priority, especially when the system rewards it. That's why situations like this don't need bad guys at all. They don't need secret plans or bad intentions. They just need incentives. In a strange way, the RAM shortage reflects human nature itself. A highly advanced technological world still shaped by very old instincts. And that's what makes the situation so frustrating and so difficult to fix. <laughs> At first glance, this system seems to work extremely well. It works for companies, for investors, and for the industry as a whole, but clearly not for regular customers. And that's where things start to feel not accidental. It's hard to believe that everything happening right now is just random. Let me tell you, memory manufacturers didn't wake up one day and suddenly realize that artificial intelligence was important. The AI boom was predictable, it was planned for, and production capacity was gradually redirected toward AI, data centers, and the enterprise clients long before consumers started feeling the impact. From a business perspective, this makes perfect sense. AI customers pay more, buy in bulk, and assign long-term contracts. Regular consumers don't. And once again, this creates a very convenient situation. Limited supply, higher prices, and a market that slowly adapts to those prices. Just like we saw the GPU shortage in 2021, the market gets reshaped, not because someone is forcing it, but because the system rewards it. This doesn't require secret meetings or hidden agreements. It only requires aligned interests. And there is one more angle that makes this even more interesting. Under one of my RAM shortage videos, one of my viewers left a long comment suggesting that this entire situation might also be pushing the industry toward cloud gaming. And honestly, that idea isn't crazy at all. Cloud gaming is built around subscriptions. No upgrades, no second-hand market, no ownership. From a corporate standpoint, it's almost perfect. Companies control the hardware, control performance, control pricing, and get monthly income instead of one-time purchases. For them, it's far more predictable and far more profitable than selling components to individual users. Okay, for now, I'm not saying this is the main goal, but it fits perfectly into the direction the industry is already moving. When building a PC becomes too expensive or too complicated, alternatives like this start to look more attractive. And cloud gaming happens to be ready at exactly the right time, especially in 2025 and 2026, when it's improving faster than ever. So once again, this doesn't need villains, it doesn't need bad intentions, it's all about the incentives. In a way, the RAM shortage isn't just a hardware problem, it's a reflection of how modern tech markets work, and how easily they can shift from the user without even announcing it. So, yeah my boys, this isn't about panic, it's about understanding the situation itself. Remember my boys, the RAM shortage isn't something that will magically disappear next month. It's part of a bigger shift in how tech is produced, sold and controlled. And whether we like it or not, consumers usually feel these changes the longest. If you're waiting for prices to suddenly go back to normal, I will disappoint you, they won't. The smarter move right now is to adapt, stay informed and think carefully before upgrading. That's it for now. Thank you for watching and goodbye.